Hello and welcome to Cyber Focus. My name is Timothy Smith. I'll be your host today. And my guest today is Dr. Mona Itani. Mona, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for spending the month with us. We're so excited that you and the students are here from American University in Beirut in Lebanon. And uh, I, I, have great, I have very much enjoyed the Lebanese hospitality here in Bloomington. So thank you for bringing it. Thank you. And wait until you come to Lebanon. You'll see a very different story there. Oh, good. I am excited to come. So thanks for the invitation. So tell me, how is it going? Global Business Institute now. I think this is our ninth year and we're so excited to have you and the students from AUB here on campus. Four weeks of entrepreneurial boot camp. So tell me uh, your take on the experience thus far. Yes, definitely. I think it has been a great experience for everyone, of course, starting with the students. Uh, and most of them uh, are visiting the U.S. for the very first time. So definitely this is a life-changing experience. They're getting to also not go to only one state, but to three states. So we've been to Indiana, to Illinois, Chicago, and we're going to Washington, D.C. as well later um next week. And I believe that also being at IU, getting immersed with the entrepreneurship, education and culture, the professors, and also meeting lots of entrepreneurs and, and meeting people who are doing entrepreneurship is very helpful for the students to get this uh, instilled in them and their personalities and help them later on in their professional life. So I completely believe that entrepreneurship is important and is positive for not just people who want to become entrepreneurs, but to any professional, to anyone who wants to do well in their careers, to, to have uh, more power, to have uh, more impact in, in the in societies they live in. And definitely this experience will help them a lot. Uh, I'm the only faculty member from AUB who is joining uh, along with the students. And also this has been a great experience for me. Um, I always believe in lifelong learning. So definitely I've been doing that. But also I met a lot of different professors. We had one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, I also was inspired and enlightened uh, by meeting lots of different entrepreneurs, by going to Chicago and meeting a company there founded by Lebanese Americans and meeting uh, other people from the Lebanese diaspora, learning about their inspirational stories and seeing how they still connect to Lebanon, they still want to give back and how really uh, their success is also giving back to Lebanon and contributing to the betterment of the Lebanese people and, and the Lebanese society. So all of this experience has been one of a kind, uh, definitely unforgettable experience and we look forward uh, to, to going to DC and culminating this experience with me meeting with the U.S. Department of State, who has generously uh, helped with the GBI coming to life and, and its sustainability. And I definitely look forward to meeting the students again after they go back to Lebanon to reflect upon all of this experience and see the main takeaways and how this has really changed their lives. Mm, thank you, Professor Itani. I'm so grateful that it's been a positive experience and that you'll be able to leverage it going back home and, and the MBA students uh, um, synthesizing all the learning and the experience beyond the classroom, right? Um, not just the learning on the academic side, but having an opportunity to start to put theory into practice, um, which is something that you and I talked about yesterday being so important. So let's talk about you for a moment. You're an entrepreneur, you're a faculty member at AUB, uh, a mother of three and very busy. Um, tell us a little bit more about the entrepreneurial mindset in Lebanon and, and tell us a little bit more about your approach to entrepreneurship. Definitely. Uh, so as you mentioned, yes, I wear multiple hats. Uh, I have been in academia for 11 years now, but also uh, I'm someone who's passionate about what I do. So slowly I felt myself getting more immersed in entrepreneurship and the ecosystem through research. And then I became an entrepreneur myself. And I realized that, I mean, similar to what you read in, in lots of practitioner books, books written by great entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship is a mindset. So it's a way of how you think, how you do things. And I've I've met lots of people who, for example, call themselves, I'm an academic entrepreneur or I'm, uh, you know, so you don't have to be an entrepreneur by just starting your own business. You can, you can also be an entrepreneur in an existing uh, enterprise or a bigger establishment. You could be um, an edupreneur, like someone
someone who does entrepreneurship and education. Uh, you could be an intrapreneur, someone who does entrepreneurship in a bigger company. So definitely this is a mindset. And I believe the Lebanese people have a really a high propensity to become entrepreneurs or exercise the entrepreneurial mindset because they are independent. They are always looking forward to exceed themselves. They're very resilient, as you all know by now, with all the conflicts and the hardships we have passed through. And they always look to make their life and the lives of others better. So this is very entrepreneurial in itself. And this is why entrepreneurship makes so much sense to the Lebanese people. I believe that in the past maybe decade or so, more and more importance has been given to entrepreneurship, whether at the educational level or at the economic level. Uh, before the big like economic collapse, also, also the government has been giving a lot of attention to entrepreneurship. The central bank has put uh, some good amount of money uh, for entrepreneurship, especially in the knowledge economy. Uh, but now, of course, after the crisis, we see that there is a shift in terms of focus of entrepreneurship. It's now going more towards a self-sustainability industry and agriculture, which, which are industries which have been uh, ignored for a very long period of time. And after the big economic and financial collapse, we realized that we also need not just to do technology. Of course, technology is great and we should always keep doing that. That, but we also can think of other uh, traditional sectors and integrate in them technology to get them to the next level and bring some self-sufficiency to Lebanon and not just be always reliant on imports and on other countries, basically, because of all the turbulence in the world and now our currency is really not doing well. So uh, I believe everyone now believes in the importance of entrepreneurship and how it could contribute in, in healing the country and, and really taking the economy again to where it should be. And uh, this is why we at AUB are always focusing on um, doing more entrepreneurship initiatives, competitions, events, uh, having a stronger integration of entrepreneurship and whether business curriculum but also engineering curriculum and other faculties and I personally through my uh, own startup and my personal business I'm working on integrating entrepreneurship education at the high school level not mm -hmm. just at Lebanese schools but also at Arab schools because again this is international in nature and if you think about it we should all have a, an entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. to become better citizens to be change makers in the world with you know everything that's happening so now we are also working with different uh, countries uh, on a private and public level to integrate this kind of new mindset uh, in, in their curricula. Great. Thank you, Mona. With GBI being in its ninth year, I believe now, with the 100 students from the Middle East who joined us between 2012 and 2017, one of the byproducts of the program was the goodwill that was cre created in the region because the students come here to southern Indiana, have a great experience, um, learn from some great faculty, but also take so much more from the experience beyond the classroom to bring back to their communities and lead positive change and be a change maker. And uh, about a year ago, I was on a Zoom call with Dean Yusuf Sadani at AUB, and he was excited about this opportunity and what we discussed about what the program may look like. And he said, this, this could bring a lot of hope to us. We could use the hope. How is entrepreneurship in Lebanon bringing hope to your country beyond some of the wonderful things you cited a moment ago? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I believe uh, in Lebanon now you have two options. You either, or maybe three options. First op option that many people are opting for is just like leave the country, go somewhere else. Uh, the second option is just like stay where you are and just keep nagging about the situation. And the third one is like saying, I'm going to stay here, but I'm going to do something about it and try to improve not just my own life, but lives of people around me. So this is where really entrepreneurship can help you uh, because you can can find new opportunities for yourself. You can keep busy away from the political scene and everything that frustrates us in Lebanon on a daily basis. Lots of like frustrating news and things that you think are obvious, but no one is, is like giving them the proper attention they deserve. And this is where people can actually 
look at what they're good at and put a plan towards that to to create some kind of change. So whether so I'm good in education, for example, I'm an educator. So I created a business in education, right? Mm-hmm. So based on my academic experience, on my network and entrepreneurship and my expertise and training and devising programs, I created programs for high school students and for high schools in the Arab world. So each one of us is good at something they do. And with entrepreneurial mindset, with some entrepreneurship education and coaching, they can actually put together a project or a plan for something a bit bigger where they can bring positive impact to their country, to the people. But also, again, we're known in Lebanon that we don't just focus on Lebanon. We all we are also versatile in a way that we can work in different countries around the region. We are mostly trilingual. We speak English, French, and Arabic very fl- fluently. And so, I mean, we have a lot of advantages that we can leverage to to really create meaningful projects, businesses, and sometimes, again, regional businesses or maybe international businesses as well. And by this, we would be uh, helping the Lebanese economy and honestly helping ourselves first because we are creating hope for us to stay, creating hope for other people, our children, uh, our students, our families, our relatives to see that in spite of everything, you can still make a change and you can still take your future in your own hands and not just keep waiting for you know the government to do something or for the for the politicians to become more responsible this will take time but we have to be also responsible citizens and and choose to do the right thing at the right time great thank you mona so when you think about higher education sometimes uh, it seems uh, less likely area for entrepreneurship to flourish and for innovation, right? We are, our model of higher education has been around for some time, certainly. Um, and we need to continue to question uh, what we're doing and, and examine the relevancy, right? And, and, and the topics in the classroom and balancing the, the lex- lessons between the fundamentals and moving into the the more innovative side of of business and of entrepreneurship. I wanted to ask you your advice, Mona, because uh, with your experience and and what you've been a part of, and and you are certainly a change maker. Congratulations for that. How can we continue to innovate within higher education and and not lose any of the the relevancy that's needed for some of the impact and outcomes that you have just outlined so beautifully? Exactly. So uh, I, I go to lots of conferences on higher education and education more generally. And uh, there is now like this continuous conversation of how relevant are universities in, in the 21st century, especially, you know, after COVID, after the whole world shifted online. Uh, like, why do we need, you know, universities? Why do we need students to come to campus anymore? Can they just learn, you know, web design on their own on Coursera and like start uh, earning money uh, from the many companies who need such jobs. So basically, uh, this is a big question. And uh, again, I mean, um, I don't have the perfect answer to that. However, I know for sure that universities can still bring a lot of value to 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 people, to youth mostly. But uh, we need to uh, rethink of our positioning, definitely, because we are being, I mean, we have competition from other players which did not exist like 20, 30 years ago. And uh, we should also be flexible in our approach to learning, uh, to, um, to to how we used to think of, of, you know, university and education in the past. So definitely, I think um, there should be a major revision of how we do higher education, of how we think of, of the classroom in general or the learning environment. I personally try to be very innovative in my classes. So uh, whenever it came to, you know, teaching online, I didn't do lecturing online. The lecturing would be, you know, pre-recorded in like what you call micro learning modules. Mm -hmm. And we would just keep the live uh, sessions for discussions, exercises, breakout rooms, things like that. Uh, So... I mean, we cannot just replicate the old models in in today's world. I think lots of that has changed. Even now, if we're going back into the physical classroom, we cannot ignore the changes in, in, in how students learn and what they expect. And we have to take this into consideration. So definitely uh, we have to 
um, reconsider again, uh, like, should we be lecturing all the time in the mm. class? Definitely not, uh, because we learned that I can just, you know, pre-record the lecture material and this could be more effective in terms of capturing that knowledge and concept and information. So how do I use my time wisely in the classroom? Again, I believe I'm like a great believer in experiential learning, mm. workshop style, uh, classrooms, uh, hands-on projects. I mean, every single course I teach, there's a hands-on project where the students are expected and asked to talk to people from outside the university mm. to make this project happen to start doing networking uh, to do interviews and by doing that they're gaining lots of skills they need in life and only when they gain this holistic experience they will know oh like really this university experience has been very unique i couldn't possibly have earned this you mm. know through a degree or a diploma on coursera or other you know mm -hmm. uh, online online um platforms so i think this is what we need to focus on really and uh, definitely there's a uh, a mind shift and I know some people who are change resistant would not like to change the way education has been happening because of, because of all of the prestige and you know we we know what we're doing but I think the world has changed and if we want to stay relevant we have to change with it as well and I believe yeah power distance should be a narrower now between professor and student um Again, uh, how we uh, teach in the classroom should be completely different. They, now they are used to, you know, being on their cell phones all the time. Uh, they're used to TikTok video styles. They're used to fast kind of uh, snippets of content. So you can't bore them with a lecture for an hour and expect them to, to stay focused with you. It just doesn't happen that way anymore. And again, I think focus on this holistic experience that the university could give you and uh, which is hard difficult otherwise to gain from you know some other place so like we do in entrepreneurship we say focus on your unique value proposition so i think we have to rethink our unique value proposition because now with you know google and with all of the information online really it's not about the knowledge anymore mm -hmm. right it's about the experience itself I like that so much. It's about the experience and about the individual. And it makes me think of uh, my colleague speaks of the difference between success and winning, right? Success, you're bringing people along and it, pre it, it promotes so much more. And winning seems so self-centered. And, and uh, of course, it's, that's often the case when compared to what success can bring. So, Mona, one final question. Thanks so much for sharing all this with us today. I think about change and being a change maker uh, and what you've shared with us. How has this experience changed you if you reflect on these last few weeks and what you're learning and hearing and all the interactions you've experienced? Um, how has it changed and contributed to your growth mindset? Of course. Uh, so one thing um, I always say when I come to the U.S. is is much more similar than I thought it would be. So we think like we're living, you know, <laughs> oceans apart that the USA is this like different country with a completely different culture. It's a different world. And you expect this, you know, out of the world experience. When you come here, it feels and looks very familiar. And I believe one takeaway is that we in the world as human beings are much more alike than mm, different. Absolutely. This is one thing I've I've learned with my many like travels and, and meeting people, even like very diverse people, very different in terms of how I look, but the way we think, the way we talk, the way we, I mean, there are much more similarities than differences. Also, definitely, um, we cannot ignore that the USA has been, um, exp you know, exporting all of these, you know, ideals and concepts and some parts of its culture to the world. And being, again, I mean, I'm representing the American University of Beirut. Definitely, we live by a lot of these values uh, and we are definitely influenced by the culture. But one important thing to keep in mind is how we adapt all of these values and, and you know, differences and into what fits our own culture and our own history and identity without changing ourselves 
uh, drastically. So I think this is a very interesting point, and I've discussed this with, with quite a few professors here, like the Silicon Valley mindset of entrepreneurship, for example, which is very predominant in, in the whole world, and especially now in the Gulf and in the Levant area where I live, because we also um, talk about entrepreneurship in the same way, right, as the Silicon Valley model. However, if you look at it and you think about it, the, this like framework cannot be applied as is. It should be adapted. And I think uh, this is something I've been reflecting a lot about uh, during my time here is how do we adapt what we are exposed to here to what makes more sense to us in Lebanon? Again, with all the similar similarities, uh, yet there will be some differences and th this is power, this is good strength uh, after all. I mean, uh, what makes you unique is your differences. So we have to leverage on that. We have to always keep in mind, we don't want to just replicate or copy, but we really want to adapt and customize according to our needs, to our culture. And uh, this is what I'm doing right now. Mona, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a great pleasure hearing from you, learning from you, and your uh, ideas and enthusiasm inspire me. So thanks so much for joining me, and I'm so excited to join you and the students in Washington, D.C. with the State Department to share with them all the good things that have been happening this month. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.